Hi, everyone, and welcome. This is Karen Newland, and this is the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. It is Saturday, 25th of May, 2019. And today, uh, Jim was scheduled to be here, but he is not feeling so well, so he's taking a well deserved rest today. But we had at the very last minute coming in like a champ, uh, we had Tyler. Ellison coming into channel for us. So we'll, we'll introduce Tyler in just a second. So thank you so much for uh, showing up for us and, and saving the day, so to speak. We also had Alex, who's right there, ready to come in with a workshop, but we're going to do the workshop in just uh, two weeks so he can come in. So I'm thankful for everyone that uh, was able to step up. Okay, so just, uh, just a, little, a few little um, housekeeping announcements. Just on the 8th and the 12th of August, 2019, mm -hmm. is the 5th, 4th, 4th Ascension Workshop that will take place in Rochester, New York. And if you are interested in joining that, you can go to hukalo.org and you can find out all the information. You can make a deposit. And for those uh, few days, you can uh, be there with Max and Jim and all the people, the Hukalo family, everyone getting together to do Reiki classes, galactic Reiki, also channeling, telepathy, all kinds of different classes. It's always a lot of fun. So please check it out on hukalo.org. And for the people who are inspired to help support Hukalo, you can become a Hukalo club member. Um, you can go also to hukalo.org and forward slash webinars where it says join Hukalo. And for just a small donation every month, you have access to all of our paid webinars and first access to classes and news and everything going on at Human Colony. And to everyone who does support Human Colony all of this, all these years and all, for all this time, really thank you so very much. It just helps us do what we do every week. So much love to you for that. And what else do I want to say to you? There's so many things. I don't know anymore. But anyway, uh, so let's get started. We usually start with a blessing. We're going to have two people do the blessing. We've got Lucia, and we'll start with her. So go ahead, Lucia. She's not there. Okay. Well, we'll start with you, Tyler. Why don't you do the blessing? Sure. All right. When she comes back. Sure thing. Yeah. All right, so. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, I couldn't oh. unmute for some reason. No <laughs> okay. problem. Oh. Yes. Do the blessing first, and then yes. we'll come back to Tyler. Okay. Will, okay perfect. Go ahead. Asha sanomi kirishi saka, asha sonaki. Asha sakala asho sokisi, asho nimi akasha saki, asho siri akasha sonami. Namaste. Namaste. We speak a lot of light language here. I don't know if you know that, Tyler. Oh, no, I didn't. I, I'm familiar with blood language, but I didn't know that that was a common theme. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. All right. All right. Spirit of creation, alive in all emanations of life, thank you for this gift of existence. Thank you for our human family and its realization of the interconnectivity of all of our consciousness. Thank you that we come together today in a group hug that emanates across worlds. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. So today, just to introduce who we have with us, we have um, Alex, we have Christine, Dawn, Ava, uh, Lucia, Reinhardt, and myself, and of course you, Tyler. Um, so Tyler, because I've never met you uh, until today, and I'm pleased to meet you. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, where you're from, what, and how your journey sort of into channeling began? Yeah, so okay. Um, sure, I'll get started, I guess, a little bit of uh, my story. So I, uh, uh, in 2014, I got involved with channeling uh, mainly through having been exposed to Bashar and Daryl Anka's work, you know, two years prior, 2011, 2012, I started hearing uh, channeled messages from that source. And I, I never really applied them until 2014. 2013 very extensively I was sort of aware of the information and I was very much in like newly waking up sort of seeker mode where I was hearing it and I was like wow this stuff's profound I didn't really know what channeling was at the time so I remember hearing his material and thinking that was a person being like you know I was just like this guy's so smart how's he know all this like I've never heard anyone speak like him before and then you know as, as I paid more attention I was like oh this is an entity speaking through a person I'm like whoa okay this is like getting a little strange it started to kind of separate uh densities in my eyes of like what is happening in reality and 
eventually I started applying the formula that he provided of like following passion with no expectation of outcome and just continuously doing it. I started doing that in 2013, like to a T and it blasted off my, my own life in many ways. So I was living in Delaware. Uh, my cards got rearranged in the deck of life and I moved up to Connecticut super unexpectedly and was given an opportunity to be able to just like focus on my own journey, my own life. I was able to seriously study esoteric arts, energy healing, yoga, all of that for like a, like a, over a year. I was, uh, I created for myself without even knowing I was doing it an opportunity to really get into a lot of this stuff. And fast forward from there to 2014, um, I find a, a video, someone posted of uh, Daryl Anka teaching a channeling class from like long, I think back when he was first getting started with Bashar. And I remember listening to it and uh, I applied some of the techniques that were provided and I was using it to write a uh, short story. I wanted to actually channel out a book. So I was like, this will be really fun. And I was creating a story that I was very proud of. I thought it was a very fascinating story. Um, but then I fell into the trap. I think a lot of people who channel fall into initially, it's just where you start to identify with the material and then you judge the material. It's like, oh, I don't like the way that came out, which is what I did to the story which because it was a reflection of me, right? I was channeling it, you know, um, I was essentially judging myself. So it stopped the process on the story and I took a little break. Um, maybe within that same month, I had an amazingly profound dream um, where these two light beings like were shimmering down from the cosmos onto this sunny beach. And when they landed, they like crystallized into like women. It was two, two very beautiful women and I remember being with them and just talking to them. We were taking a walk. They were kind of almost like my guides. I was revisiting aspects of my life with their support. And the dream ends with us in this beach house and we're talking and I'm like, hey, so are we gonna go somewhere? Are we gonna travel? And I, I forget their response to, to my question um, or curiosity, but they return to their original form of being light beings and they're emanating this powerful vibration of, of very deep unconditional love and it was so strong that it like seamlessly woke me up from sleep where I like was one second dreaming, one second awake, but the vibration of love was still building to the point that when I woke up, it was like bubbling out of me. I like woke up like, um, like just totally immersed in that state. So that was then uh, when I realized like, okay, if I was able to channel like a fictional story from my imagination or my guides or, or wherever it was coming from, Maybe I can channel out the symbols of this dream. So I started to connect using the exercises and uh, the symbolism that came through seemed really powerful and like really valid and insightful. So I was like, okay, there's something to this and I think I can vocally channel because before I was writing to translate the symbolism of the dream, I was vocally doing that. Uh, so I just started to practice and practice and practice. Right around that time, Bashar released a, uh, through one of his transmissions, symbols of different extraterrestrial societies and how to contact them. And he released one for the Pleiades. And right around the same time, I was just given a channeled book called the Pleiadian Agenda. Um, so I had that channeled book. I saw this symbol. I was like, okay, maybe I'm supposed to like connect to Pleiadians. So that was my first experience with like directly working to contact another channeled entity um, or another entity. And that was in 2015. Uh, so about a year after all of this. And um, the first thing that comes through is a Pleiadian being I have never heard of that other people have channeled, which was a being going by the, the name Mira, M-I-R-A. And I had never heard of this being. I didn't know really much about Pleiadians except for what I had read in the book. But I, I worked with this being for probably about a year, probably a little longer actually, and, uh, and then fell into that same trap again of, of judging the material, um, letting my own you know, negative belief about myself and channeling be something that took me out of the practice of continuously doing it. So I, I went back into sort of judging. And since then, um, it has been a really powerful transformation process of integrating my own shadow, uh, integrating all the different aspects of myself, and the more I'm doing it, the more I've seen the channeling state open up in, in very amazing ways. And uh, the further I go, the deeper I can channel and the more unlimited it becomes. So I'm, I'm at this point now of learning not to, not to identify with anything that comes out, not to judge anything that comes out, but realize that it's, 
you know, it's, it's all coming from me essentially, because even the channel beings, right? Like I'm just raising my vibration to match them. And then they're just, we're in resonance. So it can be translated through, through voice. So I realized like, okay, no matter what comes out, it's myself. So don't judge it. And number two, like if I want to channel something, I just got to match its vibration. So the way I saw it, it was like, okay, anything's on the table. I just got to be able to meet it and develop the relationship. And, uh, and so that, that's really been um, sort of a synopsis of my journey. I mean, lots of other intricate details uh, throughout that journey, uh, many challenges, many, many periods of growth, um, many friends, some who have come and gone and many new ones coming. So it's, it's been a very powerful journey. And uh, I, I never would have imagined that this sort of thing would have been my life if you asked me, you know, over 10 years ago. So I'm very, very thankful for, you know, for where life's guiding me. So that's great. So so now you is that what you do for a living you journaling and counseling and working with people is that your primary that's, that's becoming it very fast yeah. um i've done like more events than i've ever done and channeled for more people than i've ever channeled for within the last like two weeks yeah um i've also channeled more than i've ever channeled in the last two weeks it's been great um however it's it's not my primary source of where i'm spending my energy each day i mean i do a lot of it and I'm quickly allowing for that to become my, my primary my primary focus. But I also uh, go to school for acupuncture. Okay. Um, I work part-time in a health food store. And um, yeah, and I, I meet with clients in the health food store. I do herbalism um, and supplement recommendations and education. So um, it's it's very fulfilling. And I, I like how each, each structure I've helped uh, co-create in my own life is very supportive of, of one another. So. So, so your shelf behind you. Is that tinctures and yeah, yeah? I have different uh yeah different substances for consumption. So uh, I'll just pull off I'll just pull off like two because I think these are the two I'm using the most. Um, so I have um, ionic gold, um, mainly because it has some very interesting effects on the system. It can help with lucid dreaming. It can help with um, brain function, uh, DNA repair. I mean, it does, does a lot of really great stuff. So I have a uh, my Mother Earth Minerals uh, Gold. And then this is one I've been playing with. Is it actually real gold in there or is it? Uh... So, it's, so it's parts per million. So it's very small part, uh, particles of gold suspended in water. Yeah. So so very cool. With the homeopathic uh, dosage of, of gold then. It is could it... be. It could be. You would hope so. So it doesn't build up, right? Because it's, uh, it's technically a metal. <laughs> yeah. You know? People but, um, eat gold. So they eat yeah. it, right? Yeah. yeah, right. I've never had it, but golden rice, I've heard of that being a thing where they'll cook like a pot of rice with like a gold coin in it. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, they, I mean, they, they actually eat like flakes, very thin flakes of pure 24 karat gold. So if it's parts per million, it's probably not, uh, it's not in any kind of toxic uh, level. Yeah. Right, so, right. Or it's supposed to help with your lucid dreaming. Have you experienced that? Is that actually... I I have, and I have a very fun story about that. I uh, went on and I, I do a little astral traveling, um, mm -hmm. especially to improve the skills and, and to build relationships with these beings uh, before channeling. I'll, I'll travel. And um, I was traveling one day and I was I saw this being in like a cave behind a waterfall in, in the astral world. And I went in the cave, not knowing would be in there. And it's this, this like old immortal master in like this chamber of like gold treasure. Mm. Uh, and I'm like, whoa, I'm like, okay, what do I even do here? Like, do I talk to him? Do I go? I kind of just barged in. I'm like, I should talk to him. Yeah. And I'm like, what do I want to ask him? I'm like, okay, how do I improve my dreams? And I asked mm. him like, hey, how can I improve my dreams? And it's so funny because he's in like a golden chamber. I didn't know gold does this. And he looks at me, he's like, sleep with some gold. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I took that liquid gold and a piece of labradorite after the journey and I just put a few drops on the labradorite and slept with it. I didn't even consume it. And it gave me wild dreams. And um, this was before I knew gold could do this. Mm -hmm. And then months later go by, I'm on um, a really fantastic doctor, uh, Gabriel Cousins. I'm on his website. He's selling that same gold I had just bought. And he, it, it's indicated for lucid dreaming, um, REM sleep. And I was like, what the heck? I'm like, a being in a golden room told me to sleep with gold. And I was like, no matter how you cut this, somehow my subconscious knew that gold could help with dreaming because it presented me that imagery before I even knew the question I wanted to ask. Yeah. So, it was, so, it was, so anybody who's, who's wearing a gold necklace or a gold ring has probably got a better chance of lucid dreaming than someone who does not. 
I would agree. I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I'm wearing silver. <laughs> Just, oh, beautiful. But I lucid dream all the time. I really do. I, I every time I every time I I don't lucid dream at night. I always lucid dream in the middle of the day. If I like lay down to take a nap, I always have lucid dreams. So, but you know, but I haven't slept with gold. But that makes sense. I don't know if anyone else has had that experience. But it's very interesting. And and metals and everything. I mean, they're just crystalline. They're just different structures. So and they're all there to assist us. So, so what was the other thing that you had on yourself there that you're going to show us? Oh yes. Yeah. So this is um. This is a substance that I, I, I like. I took it mainly because I felt like it was – so I'll alternate through supplements. I don't always religiously take them. But this is one called Shilajit or Shilajit. And um, it's essentially tar that oozes out of the Himalayan mountains. Okay. And um, it's, it's controversial because um, it does test positive for heavy metals. There's lead. There's other substances in there that aren't good. But it is rich in a, um, a natural acid called fulvic, F-U-L-V-I-C, fulvic acid, and very, very powerful substance, um, mainly for the delivery of nutrients um, into small spaces. So it can take any sort of nutrition you're consuming, and it can drive it deeper into the brain. It can drive it deeper into the cells. Um, it's, also, it's also been reported to break up calcifications. So the fulvic acid is really one of the main benefits of it. Um, which can actually be extracted and they sell separate supplements so you don't have to worry about the natural metals if you want to just get that acid. Is right, it, I would say, yeah. So is it coming out of the out, out of the melting of the of the snow? It's uh, from what I understand, it's like the the material and uh, this is you know very being on the outside looking in kind of knowledge, but from what I understand, it's essentially like the decomposition like ancient soil and mountain and it forms this tar that's just oozing out of the rocks it's like oozing out of the side of the mountain um and it seems to be made up of a lot of decomposed plant matter like over like millions of years that's what they believe um creates the fulvic acid and i believe that's also similar to how the himalayan mountains are producing it okay because i've been I, I go to the Himalayas a lot and I'm, I'm now i'm trying to think if i've seen any kind of tar like running down the sides of the mountain. I mean, it's always quite muddy and it's always, you know, there, there's a lot of rain and everything, but I'm just trying to think if I've seen the actual tar. Do they pull it out of the water? Do they pull it out of the river? Or? I, I think they pull it out of the mountain because the from what I understand, the legend of how it was discovered is the yogis observed like monkeys eating it out of the mountain or like consuming, consuming it. Um, so I'm imagining it was some sort of... It, it, I've never seen images of it in its wild form, but I'm imagining it must have been some kind of form that an animal could get and then eat, and it must have been unique enough where the yogis could have identified it as a unique substance rather than it just being soil. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. How do you spell it again? What is it called? I just want to look it up after. Yeah, it's called Shilajit, um, and it's spelled S-H-I-L-A-J-I-T. Shilajit, okay. All right, I'll check it out. All right, Shilajit, everybody, we'll check it out. So, yeah. so, so you, so you're studying acupuncture, and well, obviously, you'll become an acupuncturist, which is really uh, a good way to use energy, and you can probably incorporate your Reiki and energy healing and all kinds of stuff like that in there. What was uh, that? What was that calling about? When did you? So my my main thing was I I knew I was I even had a friend who I was working with who was playing like a minor guru role in my life when I was first going through all of these this like awakening phenomena in 2012 2011 and I remember one day he like looks at me and he's like he's and he's he, we're both like, like in our early 20s I'm probably 20 at this point you know um, he looks at me and he's like you're totally gonna be an energy healer and I didn't know what energy healing was but he just looks at me and says that he's like by the way you're like definitely gonna become that yeah. and I'm like. Okay. Okay. And, um, <laughs> yeah. then I, I started, you know, studying the chakra system, um, and started looking into like energetic anatomy. Uh, and I, I fell in love with it and I was like, okay, how do I take this and make it like a little more mainstream so it can be a very sustainable type of, uh, income. Mm -hmm. And, uh, just through synchronicity, I remember being around this girl that I thought was really amazing. And she was like, I'm going to be an acupuncturist. And it hit me. I'm like, that's, the way that's the way in that's what society's asking for and it's a total gateway into like the more subtle realms of energy healing 
Yeah, well, you said chakra right, so I was really proud of you just now. <laughs> oh yeah, I, my teacher corrected me. I called it a, a chakra, and he was like, oh, what, what? I got. I just got to say that that's not a real chakra. word." Chakra. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Yeah." Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You may continue with your study now yeah. because you say it right. Yeah. Perfect. So, so now I, I have a question about that because it's interesting to me. I don't know if you've, you've followed human colony, you, you know, human colony, right? You've, I am bit. just becoming aware of it now. Um, okay. Through, yeah. Through Safira and then through okay, um, one of the interviews I saw you do with, I forget his name, really good channeler, ET Whisperer. Oh, Rob Gothier. Yeah. Yeah. I was just watching that one. Um, yeah. so this is, I'm very on that, very on the outside, but, but I'm learning okay. more. Well, he, well, because the way Jim started channeling and the whole, the whole reason human colony exists, just to give you a little history is Max Rempel, who, uh, he makes appearances now and then, but it, this is, you know, this is really his baby, uh, human colony. Um, he was going to Jim very, uh, he was a client of Jim for Reiki and, and Jim was just doing Reiki. He was very good at Reiki. He really loved it. And Max was going there like every week. And one moment Jim was just like, um, I don't know how to tell you this, but like, I feel like there's like these beings here that want to talk to you. Cause as you know, through the, the contact, he was having a lot of, and he'd never had anything before. So he was having this sort of these impulses and, and Max being a PhD scientist wanting to explore everything. He's like, well, what do they want to tell me? You know, what do they want to tell me? And Max had a ton of questions about ETs and contact and all that. And it's really just started like that. And Jim just started opening to channel all of this information. And, and so then they just made this platform and to not only put Jim's channeling out there, but to give other opportunities for people to learn to channel and to share channeling and to grow it in that way. So that's how it happened. But I was thinking about acupuncture because you're actually piercing the, the skin of a person with this needle. And I'm just wondering if you as the person doing it are you getting like, because people who massage therapists also get, you know, tons and tons of information as they work on people. Yeah, you definitely. Know? And I'm just wondering yeah. what kind of psychic connection are you building to them as you are, you know, literally penetrating their, totally. their skin. Yeah. And eliciting so I, the emotions and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll get um, doing the acupuncture. You get different cues of what the what's going through the person's system, whether it's the more physical aspects or the more subtle. Um, with acupuncture, because I do the the Chinese style, which is where it's it's not like Jap Japanese acupuncture. It's just just the skin, very superficial. With Chinese, you go into the muscle, and you can go. Oh, I mean, I've, I've stuck needles like through someone's elbow. You know what I mean? Not all the way through, but like in there. So you really go deep in with the Chinese style, and the body will like let you know what's happening. Like if the person like really needs that needle, you'll actually feel their muscles grab it and pull it. Wow. And it'll actually get sucked in. Um, if the person's very weak, you can feel how like you're stimulating the point with the needle. So you're kind of inserting the needle in and out without pulling it out. Just while it's inserted, you're kind of going up and down, up and down. And you'll feel how the body is really weak and it doesn't recognize the needle but then you keep stimulating and you'll feel it start to wake up and then it will grab it. And sometimes the person will have like a jolt of electricity that's running down the energy meridian. And um, so, so even just in terms of like a hands-on way, you can get very physicalized awareness of what's happening in the system. But I definitely will have a subtle or psychic awareness that kicks in when I'm doing it that's telling me more than just those physical cues. Typically that will emerge if I'm combining the, the energy healing with the acupuncture. Like one person I was working on, um, he had just been treated by another acupuncturist. So me and her were working on a person and we, she had so many needles in this guy and he's getting better too. She's treating him for a, a really, uh, it's, a, it's a nervous system condition where he doesn't have control over parts of his body okay. and he's getting better. And so we were going to combine the energy healing afterwards to really push the treatment into the future. So it wouldn't wear off as quick. Right. And I'm working on this guy right after her, right after he's gotten the needles and immediately I'm like, Whoa, wait a minute. This is an issue. There's an issue with his liver. Um, and I could feel like while I'm like scanning with my hands, like the major organs that are out of balance and 
it's been interesting because that wasn't something that had come up for the acupuncturist as part of his diagnosis. There was no liver pathology in there. But when I was working on him, I was like, oh, he's got like a liver liver issue related to like emotional like repression. Yeah. And he, he uh, chronically uh, uses, uh, this person uses cannabis to, he doesn't drink, but he uses cannabis to like feel good and to be social. So I was like, oh, okay, you know, there, I mean, that can happen. People can, you know, without realizing it unconsciously be suppressing emotions using cannabis. So I'm like, maybe hard to say for sure, but it's like, you know, maybe there's a connection there or maybe the cannabis is overstressing the liver just through like kind of revving up the systems and makes you all high. So you're expanding. And right. Contracting. So, right. so anyway, um, a long winded way of saying, uh, definitely I can become aware of those phenomenon for sure. Yeah. I, I know as a psychic, when I work with people, especially face to face, is that one of the things that I'll do is I will use their arm or different parts of their body, but it usually I'll start with their arm as a sort of barometer of their life. So starting here is birth. And as you go up and get, you know, older and, and depending on how old they are, I just, you know, the barometer changes, but I will be feeling something and I'll feel like a knot or a, you know, something sort of sensation and I'll press on it and I'll ask the person, you're, I'll say, you know, you're this, this, and this age, what's going on. And more often than not, there's a memory stored in that part of their, their body that is a trauma of some sort. Right, right. And I'm just wondering if with acupuncture, are you, are you dealing with those kind of trauma release memories or? So that, that's a really good question. So the, the university I'm studying at, mm -hmm looks at it from a very like materialistic perspective yeah. because it's a mainstream educational system. Sure. So that, that is talked about for sure in some of our classes, but it's practical application and development for students really isn't emphasized. And that's mainly because it's looked at mechanically of like, okay, person has this problem, you treat them this way, very medicalized in more of a physical symptomology sense rather than, inner emotions and spiritual dynamics, but that realm does exist. And I do study that uh, on my own and with, and with, and with teachers outside as well, because I view that as, I don't, I want to say superior, but I'll use that word because if you can heal that in a person, their physical stuff's going to be much easier because yeah. you've broken down the, the defenses, so to say of the aspect of them resisting their own healing. Yeah. Are you also doing it? In, I mean, I know your study is a lot, so it's like a lot to take on, but are you also, Cause when I talked to you this morning, you were in the middle of doing some yoga. And so, yeah. so are you, are you using your physical yoga to raise your sensitivity to the subtle levels of the, the body so, where trauma is stored and things like that as you release through your physical movement, what you're doing? Is that, is that well, I, I use the yoga um, in, in particular, I use what's called it. So it's, it's, it's technically, I mean, I do a little asana from like the, the you know, Indian yoga tradition, but the main, I use when I use the word yoga, um, I'm using it as a combination phrase, uh, Tao yoga okay. um, or, or Tao yin. So it's it's just the Taoist version of like that inner union. Right. Uh, I absolutely uh, use that as a main part of my lifestyle, mainly to kind of stay ahead of the curve in terms of uh, the collective consciousness. I, I look at it as if a person doesn't have enough energy, they're not going to be able to transform themselves in such a way where they're able to really embrace the role of I'm like co-creating this whole reality. So I, I use these practices to build what's called chi right. to be able to like more freely create with this reality and essentially have a bigger sphere of influence than most of the population. And what I mean by that is like, if you have enough energy, you can then expand yourself into the cosmos, into the earth and link yourselves with them. So like your body, astrally is connected to these different entities like the galactic center universal center and the earth and the reason i do that is because most people are so disconnected from these sources of infinite wisdom on an ego or not even on ego on a conscious level so a lot of people's desires for earth i don't think are fully heard because they're not actually connected to the things that can help them make the changes so i use this practice to be able to work with like the earth dreaming mind the North star and, and, and God goddess. So essentially I can like cast my universal vote on a daily basis of like what I want to see on earth. 
So I, I use this to, to manifest and co-create a really positive version of reality for myself. So that's, that's mainly why I do the practice. Um, mm. But I also use it to be able to grow the channeling ability, to be able to draw in the different elemental energies to fortify the energy healings that I do. Right. Uh, it's very, very much alchemically fusing myself with the different elements of creation uh, through the, the process. So is this something you learned? Is, is this something you've developed? Is how, Where do you know about How do you know about it? So, so um, a little bit of it is self-taught, but most of it is through training um, through an organization called the Universal Healing Dao uh, through, out of Thailand, led by uh, Master Mantak Chia. Uh, absolutely the most developed esoteric system I think I have come into contact with. I haven't looked at all of them, but... I, I was so blown away by this this man's work and the training he's done with other masters throughout time. Information that's been like kept secret for like thousands of years is being freely distributed by him, you know, through his books. So I, I've worked with his instructors um, because it's a very fascinating system. And then you, what I found, and even my teacher has said this through that system, he's like, you get to a certain point where you know the basics so well. He's like, you start to just be able to to make your own techniques. Right. He's like, start to realize how things connect and relate. And he's like, and that's the main purpose of the system to get you to that point where you're, you're embracing like that God goddess co-creator role. So when you're, you know, doing these meditations, you'll be like, Whoa, I can do the technique this way or, you know, so on and so forth. Right. It becomes intuitive for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really cool. So it's called the universal, what? Uh, healing. <laughs> yeah. Universal healing Dao. Uh, yeah. T A O. Okay. Okay, perfect. So if anyone's interested in that, they can check it out. Yeah, and that's actually most of my books. Most of my books are that. So I'll say, I'll share this one up. This one is a good one. This is all the basic techniques uh, of the system, just like as formulas. So it's like step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do this. And this is for anyone who's like trying to get the basic, basic down. This is a great book to use. Um, but then if you get the actual books where each of the formulas come from, it'll give you full context. Um, mm -hmm. So it won't just be the steps. Are you using any kind of sound and toning or is it is it mostly internal? Mostly internal based on a lot of visualization combined with body awareness. Um, but sounds are emphasized. They're used to clean out the major um, organ centers of the body, which are said in, in this system to be the creators of both positive and negative emotion. Okay. So you use the sounds to release negative emotion to help heal the organ, which is reflecting your own psyche. Okay. So it's really all you, you healing you so that you can be more expanded. Basically. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's a really great way to look at it. Yeah. All right. So uh, does anyone have any questions for Tyler as we, before we go forward? No. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Okay. So uh, that's really interesting to me because I love uh, I love anything that has to do with like self awareness and expansion and you know the the Buddhists approach things different than the Hindus, but at the same time, it all is about going inside and and getting into that center because that's where all your knowledge is, and there's just only so much you can learn externally, and ultimately, it's your inner guru that teaches you, and that's you, that larger part of you teaching you to remember, you know, all of your things. So from what you've learned, and I liked what you said about the focus too, because I, 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 I've mentioned it many times, I do a lot of psychic readings and most of the time people are asking what's going to happen to me. And it's so difficult to kind of get that little switch to remind people that it's what they focus on that they get. And then that that's really their power that's in within their grasp and that, that is if they can shift their focus into you know that certain direction then they're able to like pull more things to them but what has been your biggest realization with the work that you're doing and, and what you're learning now from your in, uh, in, internal thing um the biggest realization i think i've had is that your inner state creates reality um and it and I've also, I think the biggest lesson I've learned is that you can do all the, for me, I learned I can do all the healing techniques I want. I can do all the esoteric techniques I want. I can do all the spiritual stuff 
but even that to a certain extent is still external and they're just sort of frameworks for self-healing and i've realized for myself if i don't release my own negative perspectives my own judgments um these techniques will be limited no matter how advanced they are and how they can impact my life so i've realized that through uh releasing negative ideas um, I can embrace the full quality of these techniques and they can then gradually teach me over time each time I apply them. So I found that, you know, even with this, high, this is a highly advanced system and even using that, like, it still won't do it for you. It still won't be the thing that releases your, you know, negativity. Only you can do that, but this stuff can help you to get in that point of view. And that for me was, I think, one of the biggest realizations. Because for a while I was like doing these techniques, but I still had all that limitation inside. And I was like, the techniques are only doing like X, Y, and Z. I'm like, it. I'm like, is it really worth it? Is this really like an all, you know, as, as amazing as people say? And it was mainly just because of my own limitation. I was limiting how full these techniques could express themselves. So, so for the stuff that you was like, you're releasing the thing that you're letting go of the limiting beliefs, how is that now manifesting for you? What's the, Very, give me a before and after. So, okay. So before, before I really focused on that, I would be feeling negativity. Maybe I'd be like in public or by myself. And I had this ego complex at the time of like, oh, I've already released all of my shit. So this feeling I'm feeling can't be mine. I'm just psychically tapping into the collective reality and it's bleeding in. And it kind of put me in this victim mentality of like, oh, this is just the negative energy of the world. And now I have to put up with it and I feel so bad. And then I would, you know, do the different techniques to release like, to release like the emotions from this system, other systems. And it would it would help. It would help reduce the emotional intensity, but there'd always still be this felt like just boiling pot of like emotional water no matter what I did within myself. And uh and I realized I'm like, okay, on some level I'm still creating these negative feelings. I can't project their existence outside of me. This is in me. I have to like embrace this and look at it. So my process now has in, has evolved into a really fast process that's been really fun and really transformative, which is where I'm just embracing whatever the feeling is, you know, no matter what it is. And then I, I trace it to like a theme. So maybe it's like sadness and I'm like, okay, like what am I sad about? And I'm like, I'm sad that um, I feel like I'm alone. Maybe that's it, right? And what I'll do is I'll imagine that that version of me that feels sad because they're alone. And then I'll also imagine a version of me that's not sad because they're never alone and they've never been alone. So they don't even understand the concept. They're like, what? That's, that's crazy. What do you mean? So I imagine both of these me's and I send love, especially to the one I'm shifting to, which is the more positive one. Hmm. I then will imagine just like as a mental image, the, the journey of becoming the negative meets the positive me and I'll send love into that process. So I'm like opening the door to the shifting of that reality through this. Yeah. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll look at the negative me. I'm like, okay, what is the opinion I must possess about being alone that is creating that reality? And I'll keep asking and I'll find, I'll get all these different opinions. It's like, oh, I believe if people aren't around me, I'm alone. I believe if I'm alone, I don't have love. I believe if I'm alone, bad things will happen to me. And I'll just like let these opinions just release themselves. Right. And then it'll get to a point uh, where there's a core opinion that's creating all of it. And right. once I release that, it's like yeah. full disentangling from that previous reality and then shifting into the positive one I had uh, pointed to earlier. Yeah. So so I like what you're talking because it, there is sort of a process of moving. I mean, some people are very good at shifting into a new reality just like that. But there's a lot of people who have the story. You know, I'm, I'm alone because I nobody likes me. I'm alone because I deserve to be alone. I'm alone because I don't have this. You know, and, and those stories... You have to identify them in order to let them go. You just have to know, and you have to know, you know, where, where, what, what is that through line through all of the stories? What is it based in, and and where did it really come from? And and that healing of that sort of inner child, inner inner self that allows you to then let it go. And the the realization is, in the letting go, is that it's not true. Yep. Yeah. Right. Precisely. So, yeah. So then, you, then you're free mm -hmm. to remember who you are, and then you you realize you're not alone. So sh boom, you just shoot right up to that new timeline and that new realization. But we have, we all have so many of those things. You know, we spend spend a good deal of time <laughs> having to deal with all of those stories. But I, you hear it all the time when someone says, "Oh, I, you know, 
I heard a woman the other day, she goes, everybody, I always get passed up for promotion. Nobody ever notices my good work. And, and that's her story. And she keeps telling it and telling it and telling it. And she keeps finding more evidence of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So but it can be anything and it can be, and can be on many different levels. So very good. Very good. So we have, yeah. If we, if you can, if you're ready, if you need to drink some water, it'd be great if you could channel. Perfect. Um, I'm going to use the bathroom one more time just because yeah. I have a lot of caffeine. So. <laughs> Little quick commercial break. So just for everyone who's in the chat, also in the people on YouTube, if you have any questions for Tyler, um, we'll just see who he brings through. He's probably going to bring through his uh, guide, Ryuk, if I said it correctly, from the Sasani uh, Sasani group. It's the same as uh, it's the same group as Bashar. So it'll be interesting to have a conversation. Does anybody have any comments? Anyone? Anyone? Lucia, you have a comment? <laughs> I call her and she's like trying to mute. Yes, I am trying to it's mute. It's a pleasure to listen to him. He's quite wise. Yeah, <clears throat> very young. Eh? Thought process is, is really evolved. It, it's, I wonder what race is he from? We can ask him. Yeah, I would be interesting to yeah. know. Yeah, ask him when he comes back from the bathroom. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> Ava has a question for you. Go ahead, ask, ask your question. Hi, um, I wonder who you are on the spirit level. Can you tell us? Because you don't sound much human. Oh, who I am on this? So I'm a, I'm, that's a great, I haven't been asked that question before. That's a really good question. Um, so I think I'm many uh, beings on the spirit level. I, I, you know, realize I'm like one, you know, one grand being encompassing all of them. Um, but I recently, my own awareness of that is just that I'm, I'm like many, I'm like many beings, uh, kind of unified in this version of myself expressing as human. Right. So I, it's, it's hard for me to say as, as just one, I, I, I feel like many, I feel like a lot of different beings. <laughs> yeah, that is very possible. Thank you. Yeah. How old, yeah. how old are you, Tyler? I'm 26. Yeah. I mean, you're part of that sort of new generation of people coming up that just kind of walk right into their awareness much younger than, say, the rest of us who had to, you know, had to come into it later. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find, had, uh, do you find among your friends and your peers, the people that you're in the same sort of age group with, that this is a very acceptable, common, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I find I'm either finding it's it's not as bad. I find I, I'll run into a few people who are doing this, and mm -hmm. I definitely am linking up with people who are doing it. But it's mainly on the online community for people in my own age group who are also kind of opening these doors. In my own personal bubble of like the people I see every day in, in my personal life, um, I, I find there's not many people opening these doors like I am. I seem to have like a very strong like interest and thirst in this respect, mm -hmm. but everybody I know who I'm friends with is like more than open to this material. And a lot of them will, will listen to it and, and will apply it. So it's either I'm running into people my age who are doing it or I'm running into people my age who are extremely open to it. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. So just to ask a question before, just one more question, because um, had you, before you started channeling, did you have an interest in sort of extra dimensional? I know you had encountered the Bashar material, but previous to that, was that like a fascination for you or was it something you never really thought about? And yeah. yeah. So um, pretty much I started getting into uh, psychedelic compounds probably when I was like 17, 18, 19. Being and like what mushrooms, mushrooms, um, LSD. Those were the main ones. I mean, I also was sort of like a, a party animal before I like really found consciousness, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I had like a, a sort of a history with negatively using drugs and you know non enlightening drugs, just using you know the pleasure based ones for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, but very quickly, I, I felt like just so called to the psychedelic plant teachers. Like it was just like. There was just some knowingness in me that was like, I am supposed to be taking this. There's something for me here. And uh, as I started opening that door up more, I started attracting people into my reality that were not only in that world, they were also working on consciousness through spiritual modalities and whatnot. So I didn't really know what I was looking for. I knew there was some kind of transcendental point of view that these things could... Um, 
could reveal. And that was what I was shifting uh, into through the spiritual practice um, that I was doing at the same time that I was also using these psychedelics. I found that they were opening me up to this like bigger point of view where eventually I'd essentially be malleable enough to hear some of the different spiritual teachings. So right. I found that through this, you know, through my journey, as I opened myself up through psychedelics and spiritual practice, when Bashar's information came in, it was just like a smooth transition. It gave me like a platform to be able to sort of speak on this material in a way that also made logical sense. and wasn't just intuitively felt. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of my process. I, I, I did have that interest in energy and like understanding energy could create reality, but that was sort of the fullest blossoming I had in that respect until I got into the Bashar material. Yeah. And, and one of the questions that's always asked and uh, <clears throat> do you, have you had any kind of contact with ETs or ships or? Yeah, like I have. I've had, mul I've had multiple things. Um, some of them witnessed by multiple people, some of them just myself. Um, but I saw the, this is really interesting. And it, the memory started just coming back up, but I, I had been seeing the Sasani, the Sasani ships before I knew who they were back when I was like, you know, kind of partying. Right. I remember seeing them like, like mm -hmm. triangular craft that looks like they were stars. At first I thought it was just stars that were uniquely positioned like a triangle, but the way it would move when your eye would follow it, if you'd be driving, I was like, that thing's moving. I'm like, that's not stationary. This is a thing. And I remember seeing it like while I'd be on the highway, I'd be like, what the heck am I looking at? Like this thing is moving. Did you feel like for sure? Like it was following you or. I felt like it was following me. Absolutely. Yeah. I really, really do. Yeah. Um, and one time too, I was driving to my friend's house who I was partying with a lot and I'm on the phone with him and I'm like, dude, I'm looking at this dang triangle <laughs> thing flying over your neighborhood. Like it was following me to my friend's location. And that was, that was so surreal. I, and it started opening doors. The more I talked about it, even in that limited friend group I had and that part of my development, even they were like, dude, yeah, I saw some stuff too. Like it was really interesting. And then I had a really another interesting experience with the sighting 2015, I want to say, where I was doing a door to door, door to door work. I was selling uh, solar panels door to door with some people. Um, <laughs> and I know it was a fun, it was a really fun job. Um, and uh, the day that I see another UFO, we're at lunch and my friend shows me this video of the great pyramids of Egypt and there's a comet flying in the sky. And he's like, look at this video, man. And a blip of light comes off of the comet, starts whirling around, doing its own thing, and it just flies off. And I'm like, whoa, that's weird. Oh, my God. That night, um, after we all are done knocking doors, we're driving back to, like, our, our, our HQ for the solar company. And um, we, all, we all see a triangular UFO. Super close, low to the ground, lights on the side. It's hovering above the woods, over the highway. And we're all like, do you guys see that? We're like, yeah, what is that? And no one says anything. I'm the only person in the car that's literally like putting it together. I'm like this is a UFO guys. Like whether it's human or alien, it doesn't matter. Like that is technology that we don't see typically. Yeah. And everybody else was, was attempting to, I think to kind of rationalize it in a way that wasn't as maybe magical. But I remember seeing that and I was like, I just had UFO encounter. You didn't try to take a picture. Did it you enter didn't... your mind to take a picture? No, not at the time because we were all driving and completely like, yeah, essentially in awe of it. Yeah, <laughs> that was the main thing. Very much in awe of it. I always wonder, like, people don't take like some people take pictures, but usually the people that like really have the close up um, encounters like that, it doesn't enter their mind to take a picture. And I have to always wonder if that's sort of the emanation of like this is for your eyes only kind of idea you know no. i just i just wonder that's just something i have in I my mind there, i think there is something to that i really do because it was really i mean when i first saw the ufos like when i was like younger i remember it was while i was driving so i wasn't in a position to photograph it and then in that other one i think it was kind of for like each of the people in, in the in the car for sure i knew it was just so like it was so it felt like outside of time like it felt like while we were watching it like it was really like a lot of transfer of information in like mm -hmm. a short period of time. So there was that feeling of like a kind of intimacy with, with the experience. Yeah. Well, 
Wow. And it did, of course, it probably never appeared on the news or anything like that. Like nobody. Oh, no, no. I've seen, I've seen pictures. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen pictures of other UFOs. And then I have one friend in Ireland who, um, he describes the exact same types of UFOs I had seen. I asked him, I was like, do they, he's like, they're triangles. I'm like, do they look like stars? He's like, that's the stuff, man. He's like, they look like, they look like three stars, but they move. And I was like, okay, so we're seeing, you know, it sounds like we're seeing the same kind of craft. Yeah. So, yeah. So that it's it's cool to know that I'm not the only one who's who's seen them in this in this way either. Very cool. And and does that continue now? Do you feel or is that kind of? I don't see it as much now, but I dream about it. Um, I have a lot of dreams about uh, UFOs. I did uh, one a couple nights ago too, where um, I'm looking up and I'm on this boardwalk in my dreams, kind of like um, it's like a boardwalk slash like coastal neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I'm like looking up at the sky. I'm, I'm looking for the Big Dipper because I always try to find that in my dreams. Yeah. I'm always trying to find it in real life. Um, and um, I just see triangle UFOs going by. And then I see all these camouflaged UFOs going by. It looks like the night sky just moving, you know. And that was also symbolic too. Um, but, but yeah, so it shows up in my dream world a lot. I, I dream about them. Um, so that's maybe more open and able to... I'm, I'm wondering, so, so you're, so you're B, Ryuk, right? Ryuk is the... Yeah, Ryuk. Rio, yeah. sorry, Rio. I want. I wrote it down even. I want to say Rio. Okay, is he on a ship or is he in a? Yeah, yeah. He says he's on. He says he's on a ship. Um, last channeling I did for another channel, actually. Um, she asked him, and he was saying he's on a ship that translates into the our terminology. You could call it live light. <laughs> live light. <laughs> like, well, a live light, like live, a, light. Like a live wire, but like a live light. Um, okay. He says, he says he's on a ship um, that hovers over the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, which is really interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. So, if someone correct me wrong, doesn't Gurfik Nir have something going on over the Bermuda Triangle or not? The um the beings that Jim channels mm -hmm. are from a, a group of, of a society called Gurfik Nir, and it's a collective of different beings, and they're really working on they what they say is that they're they work on the weather. They, they can, because of, they're not really allowed to do too much intercession with man, but they are uh, helping with the weather. So, but they have all different beings on their ship. It's, the society is called Gurfik Nir. But I thought, if I'm, if I'm correct, that they had something over the Bermuda Triangle. I imagine there's a lot of things there, given it's like portal possibility of it being less like, sort of chaotic, like opening and closing of access points to other realities. I imagine it's something that's kind of like Sedona. I imagine it's like an access point for like a, a lot portal. of Right. Yeah. Right. There was two, there was a question in the chat. Um, Don, did you get your question answered, Don, or did you want to ask your question or? I put it in the chat, in the, in the, on the questions here on the board. Um, it's about monatomic gold but alex answered that one and, okay uh, the, the most recent one is from heather riney uh can you ask in meditation she says uh, i can feel energies very strong i know they are there i also channel when writing but how do i get to them to speak through me mm, okay yeah that's a that's a good question um so I, I find that the best way to do it is to create, and you'll, you'll find you'll have your own way, but this is just what I like to suggest to people as like very like basic of the basic for a framework is to create like a really deep state of relaxation, um, really intense feelings of love, strong connection to your body. So you're rooting yourself here. You're not blasting off. It's like you're rooting here because the information you want to access exists here. So strong connection to the body, strong connection to the earth, strong states of unconditional love, happiness, any good emotional quality you can cultivate to the point where you're like letting yourself get drunk off your own good vibes pretty much. And then use your imagination to build some kind of construct of like a bridge between you and the being you want to connect with where you're seeing them. Maybe you're seeing like, like imagine them as vividly as you can really painting an image of them, um, sensing their history, sensing their knowledge, sensing their points of view and sending that unconditional love into all these di dimensions of whatever you want to connect with. And then I would say, start to just become aware of your throat and start to smile to the throat and just start, I would say just start speaking. It can help if you have another person there that kind of anchors the channeling. You can also speak into like a recording device, but if you have another person 
sometimes that's what can bring the channel information through. Because if the other person's not there, sometimes it might be easier for these beings to communicate with you telepathically using words or imagery. So if you want it to vocally kind of have that emanation created, I would say have another person with you when you do this kind of process. Um, that's, that's my recommendation with it. And, the, and creating the belief that you can do that, that that's possible for you. Whenever I, I've taught the channeling classes before, I always I do exactly that. I have them visualize like literally a bridge that they can walk across and go meet the being, and and uh, also to to the the questions I always say are the key to drawing the channeling out, the questions mm -hmm. of the other person because they're questions that you will never ask yourself most of the time, and so that's one of the ways that you know that that information is coming because it's not something that you've thought of to ask or that you're, you know, that's coming from you. And then you're really having to like relax into the fact of allowing that information to come through in order to get the answer. So I, I always think that questions are the key. The questions are the key. So, yeah. so how did, how did, um, how did you meet uh, Ray Oak? How did you meet him? So I started, uh, especially recently, like the last month, was doing more channeling than I had ever done. Um, it was because somebody dug up my content from last year. I did like a channeling recording. I released it a year ago and someone just dug it up and was like, dude, this is really good. Like, can you do more of this? Mm. And I was like so inspired by someone else's appreciation of material I had judged. I thought it wasn't that great. I was like, oh, I'm not that great of a channel. I just, you know, being hard on myself. And then someone loved it so much where I was like, whoa, maybe and so pretty much I was like, okay, if I can produce something that's valuable, even like if I'm looking at it negatively, it means there's something to this. Cause like the positive emanations from this can override my own judgment. You know what I mean? To the point where other people see value in it. So I, I started doing it. Um, I just started doing it more and more and more uh, recently. Mm -hmm. um, what was the question again? I got so wrapped up. I just in asked, that. how did you first come in contact with, with. Oh yeah. So, right. so pretty much I just started practicing again throughout this last month, like very diligently. And I started just channeling collectives. So it'd be like a Pleiadian collective, a Sasani collective. And it was just collective energy. And I felt like, okay, the collective stuff's cool. I like that. But like, I want to get a being. I was like, I want to get a being. How do I get a being? And I'm connecting with one of my spirit guides, like one of my animal spirit guides. And the spirit guide was like, okay, you can look at the collective consciousness of these societies as like smoke smoke coming from a great fire. You can handle the smoke. It's not as hot. It's not as intense. It's something you can more easily digest. He's like, but if you want to get to the fire, you have to meet that being at a very high place. Like you have to be vibrating with them individually. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, so understand if you, if you want a singular being, it's going to cause your life to change big time because they're going to have to be a match for you. And mm -hmm. you're already kind of like doing a lot of stuff. So if you meet with a single being, it's just going to amplify what you're already doing. So just be aware. So I was like, sure, that sounds fun. I think I can handle it. I think it'll be really great. So um, I just started practicing with the intention of channeling one being, which had you know mixed success, I think. And then when I was meeting with my channeling group that we we, we just channel for each other really to, to bring more of this information through, um, one of them just asked like, uh, who am I speaking to? And then uh, Ryok came through and started giving backstory information on his culture, mm -hmm. uh, his role in his society, what he does. And uh, then that's just been who, I'm, who I've been connecting with. And uh, the telepathic link's been there. I mean, I'll get messages throughout the day. I'll get messages on questions I have. I'll see stuff that like is telepathically told to me, like come true. Right. And I'm like, okay, like, I guess I should listen, you know? Yeah, that's awesome, that's awesome. Um, there is a question from the chat um, from uh, Kaina and she says, is it true our prayers are always responded to, but our boundaries prevent them from being realized? I, th I think that sounds about right. Um, I think, yeah, I think the universe always hears us. And then the amount of creation we then get from that prayer. In other words, like the universe will hear our prayer, but our own boundaries, like you're saying, will limit how much of that prayer's manifestation in our reality we're allowed to experience. So the less of a negative boundary that's there, I think the more of that reality you can begin to bring into your own bubble. Do you also find that this is what I find is that someone will say, bring me my perfect job, for instance, or bring me you know, this, or I wanna serve humanity. 
And in order for that to actually happen in the fullest sense of the manifestation, there's a lot that has to happen first. Like, like you said, you have to raise your vibration. You have to let a lot of things go. You have to change and you go through a huge transformation just so that that one thing which you've asked for can actually manifest, you know? And, and so people get frustrated, like, where is it? I'm asking, I'm focused on it. I'm positive, but they don't realize that all of the muck and all of the transition and all of the transformation that they're going through is actually bringing them closer to what their heart's desire is. Yeah, that's totally my experience, 100%. I started putting it out there for like relationships like a year ago. And I remember getting to that point, I'm like, well, where the hell is this thing? Like, come on, all I'm doing is like putting that out there. And then I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Like I'm, and I realized like simultaneously as I was going through that manifestation process, I was also releasing tons of stuff. I was growing rapidly. I'm like, oh shoot, I'm becoming the me I need to be to have the relationship. And I was like, oh, okay. Like if I stick with judging this, I'm going to invalidate the whole process. It's going to take even longer. It's like, no, like realize this is, you know, part of that manifestation. Yeah. And part of the, part of the other thing that I just want to emphasize is that people get caught up in how long does it take? And, mm -hmm. and that's such a limiting belief. You're, you're like, you have a time limit saying, well, if it doesn't happen by this time, then it's not meant to be, it's not going to happen, but that's not actually the case. It just means that it's not, it's just not there because it's, you're not a match for it yet. And you will be a match when you're a match, you know, so stop fighting. Yeah. Um, kind of also as she says, um, and I don't know if this is something you experience, but she says, what do you do for dissolve, dissolving, uh, ascension symptoms and weakness? Um, yeah. So I think that that's a really cool question because recently I've been having those sort of things happening where I'll just be like going real high and then all of a sudden I'm like, I got to lay down. Like I feel really <laughs> intense. And, yeah. And yeah. So, so I find that what I really like to do is like you were saying, not to, not to judge and be like, okay, this is totally sacred. This is part of my path. This is happening. Not accidentally. It's not a curse, you know, or, or a problem. It's just part of where I'm at Right. And, and to honor it. And then to go through whatever process you have to, to connect with whatever, whatever the teaching is that's there. Cause I find in those moments, this is what, this has been my experience. Whenever I'm having those moments of like ascension symptoms, of like fatigue or like weakness, I'll like be like, okay, I'm either releasing something about to receive like some kind of spiritual message from my guides and like a teaching or both. Right. So I'll like use that time to really like connect and be like, okay, like, is there an emotion here? There is. Okay. So I should probably let something go. Okay. There's no emotion. Okay. Maybe I can like, go inside of myself and see like maybe visually using my inner psychic senses, see what, what's connecting with me. Um, Cause sometimes that'll also be um, an actual like upgrade coming from one of your guides and the weakness is sort of synchronistically orchestrated. So you, you're not going to be going anywhere. You're sort of, you're sort of buckled up. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yes. Um, so Alex is asking the question and I was having the same thought. So, because we're getting, we for about an hour, which is great to talk to you, but I thought we could also maybe not go into some fun or Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll be. Oh, I'm sorry. You, your mic got a little, uh, a oh, little fuzzy. See, that's what I was saying about like, that's why I turned myself up in the beginning because as yeah. I get more relaxed, I get further back in my chair. So, uh, what I was going to say is it okay if we go ahead and, and go into some channeling now? Yeah, let's so do we it. have some time with that. Perfect. Let's do it. Thank you all so much. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. So I've also, too, this this uh, channeling will be uh, a little different than the other ones that I've done in the sense that I've recently created um, in my own belief system and imagination, um, essentially astral technology that's okay. designed to like facilitate deeper states of channeling. So this is the first session I've done with the application of that. So I'm uh, also sort of like all of you, I'm very eager to see what's gonna come out because this will be a new, for myself, a new chapter in, in this practice. Perfect, so so do, is it, do you need, do you have a preparation period? Do you need a few minutes or? Just, I'm just gonna, it's just gonna take me a second. I'll just okay. uh, create the space. Okay, we're ready when you're ready. We're ready right. whenever you're ready, so.
All right, and now that we have established this link, we are happy to open all of ourselves up to all of your wonderful perspectives and points of view. How are all of you today? Thank you very much, and thank you for coming. To whom are we speaking? Is this Ryok or Rayok? Sorry. Yes, it is Ryok in this matter. How are you? Very good. Thank you. I'm very pleased to meet you and, and to uh, welcome you to Human Colony and to our group here. Um, we do have some questions, if that's okay, or do you have anything you would like to share straight away? Or We open ourselves up to whatever it is you wish to begin okay. in the conversation with, and we will provide other points of view as necessary. Perfect. Uh, our first question is from Ava. Go ahead, Ava. Oh, uh, sorry, should we have to wait for her to come back? We have motorcycles no running around. She's, she keeps uh, she keeps dropping out of the chat, but she'll be back just shortly. So you're from you're from the Sasani uh, civilization. Yes, this is accurate. Yeah. Yes. So are you? Because we we do know uh, many of us are aware of uh, another another being from your society called Bashar. Yes. Yes. And also, um, I'm quite aware of. I don't know if you know, but the channel is named Sean Swanson, and he is also channeling the Sasan, some of the Sasani organization. I don't know if you're aware. Yes, we are, we are aware of all channels that are bringing through emanations from our civilization. And this is part of an orchestrated energy on all of our ends to facilitate deeper levels of connection with your society. So everyone that is channeling someone from your society, are they... Mm -hmm related in some way are they are they yes yes they are you would understand a network of family constellations are taking place here in the sense that many of the beings on your earth that are bringing through members of our society are typically having soul contracts with these members of our society or they are actual incarnations of the same soul in both societies and the channeling is just a symbolic representation of that soul-based connection. So you'll find that this is actually very common amongst many members of your civilization that are contacting ours through channeling. Perfect. And and so we understand also from Bashar and, uh, that the Sasani are to be really the first contact when f contact happens, that, that that is part of your role in the universe to, to facilitate contact with uh, new societies. Is that correct? This is correct. We like to play this game, and we understand that there are other beings playing this game as well from other societies, but we tend to gravitate to those who are most immediately ready. Okay, perfect. And Ava is back, so I want to give her a chance uh, to to come back on and ask her question. Ava, are you able to ask your question? She popped back in, but I don't know how her connection is. Okay. Um, She's going to try to come back in. So I'll, I'll ask another question. So if, if it, because there's a lot of people now, we know several mm -hmm. channels that have connected to your society but for the people that are watching, the people that are listening, if they want to connect, is it, is it a given that they will have an incarnation in your society or is typically, it, typically is typically that every single human on the planet will have a counterpart within your society? There are some exceptions. We're speaking mainly to those who actually desire to channel or connect with our society will find they want to do so, right. either because we are reflecting to them a very strong aspect of their own consciousness, or we are also showing them an aspect of themselves that is actually incarnated in our civilization. So many people on your world are having these simultaneous incarnations with us, but there are some exceptions of those who do not have this shared connection. Perfect. Okay, Ava, do you have, are you are you able to ask your yes, question? Yes, okay, perfect. Sorry. Let me let her do it while she's here. Yes, my computer is something sort so and then, hi, thank you so much for speaking to us. I have a question. Well, on one hand, I would really love to find out a little bit more about um what's going on right now on this planet in the United States. Um but also on a personal level. I am moving from a state of negativity, mainly, which I can call it this way, honestly, to higher vibrations. And I am quite often overwhelmed by, um, maybe I should um, 
mentioned that I'm highly empathic by um, people around me. I can hardly talk to my friends anymore. Um, and probably it's not just me who is experiencing it. Uh, could you give any advice on yes. this subject? Yes, I will say the following. Your friends are triggering something in you that you must release. Because understand, if you are experiencing the point of view where whatever you would call negative energies present in others are creating feelings of being debilitated within your own being, because it has that feeling of connection to you, saying, oh my goodness, I feel so disempowered, I feel so weak, and whatever you might say when you're around these people, that is your consciousness's way of saying there's something contained within you that is in such a strong amount of resonance with whatever they're showing you that it's creating that feeling of intensity. That's more or less what's happening generally when that's occurring for individuals. And I would advise to investigate, okay, well, what is the theme of what's being felt negatively within myself when I'm in proximity to these people? And through investigating with that kind of lens, you may be able to get to a root cause understanding much more quickly. Okay, thank you so much. I will give it a serious thought. And um, can you t can you tell us a little bit about the state of affairs of of Earth? I mean, what's happening in terms of um, humanity as well as as the planet? Yes, it depends on what version of Earth you're looking at. But I'll speak, and I'm saying that to open your points of view a little more, understanding there's infinite versions of this planet that you experience as one planet. So understand that it always depends on which version of Earth you're actually looking at. In general, whatever your inner emanation is, whatever your inner vibration is, will dictate what version of the infinite Earths you will experience directly. So right now, in this moment, I will speak to your collective in such a way where I will begin just to narrate slightly some of what we are seeing in all of the other parallel Earths that are in resonance with yours. They are experiencing similar themes to help paint a bigger picture of what is occurring within your society and within your planet. Earth right now is going through a particular phase in its development where enough inhabitants of your surface have reached a particular level of unification within your collective understanding of reality. Understanding that you have had collective understandings of reality in your past. But many of these collective understandings have been highly negative and it would yield your collective to then create a negative point of view of the earth time and time again, because your common understanding was based in negative points of view. Enough members of your society in the dream world have unified a new point of view as the common thread for the shared story of what's happening on your planet. And because this new unified point of view is more positive, your collective version of Earth is beginning to reveal this to you. And you'll find that you're going to have easier accessibility of what you call the versions of Earth that are positive than you did before. And you're going to be able to much more easily, much more quickly slip into that version of reality should you so choose to emanate a vibration within yourself that's in resonance with that version of Earth. Right now, you have a much easier ability to do that. And if you find you're on a version of Earth that you would call negative or is experiencing negative themes or your current personal realities are showing you negative themes, understand that the only reason that is being reflected to you is to assist you in your transformation so you can let go of whatever vibrations are actually in resonance with those negative realities. And as you begin to release those, you will be a better match for the new level of unity consciousness your society has now built in the dreaming world that you can begin to connect with. Thank you. Those are the wisdoms I keep forgetting. Thank you. You are quite welcome. We are happy to always remind you of that which you already contain as an infinite being. 
That's very true. What she said that that those are the things that people forget that they are constantly shifting. They're able to shift, and the reason that we do come in contact with many different versions of contrast is so that we can heal it and 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 have the realization of it, and then choose something different. So, thank you for that wonderful reminder, uh, Alex. You have a question. Go ahead, Alex. Can you ask yours? Do you want to ask yours live or? Yes. There he goes. Hello. Okay. Hello, and how are you today? I am well. Thank you. You are quite welcome. Let's proceed and begin. Yes. I just uh, want to know if I have uh, what I'm not I hearing him. Um, I'm not hearing his question. Uh, his, his his question is, do I have... Alex, can you say hello again? Or Hello. Hello. We are able to hear you. Yes. You're hearing me. I'm I'm Karen, but we're trying to get Alex who's coming. We are able to hear Alex. You are. Okay, I'm not able to hear him. Fine. If everyone else can everyone else hear him? Okay, everyone else is hearing him. Perfect. So I'm in a different reality where I can't hear him. It's no problem. <laughs> I'll just I'll different just trust that whatever he's saying is coming through. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you. So I'm wondering what uh, connection I have uh, with Sasan in yes. and Yes. All right. All right. So we are looking at your connection points. You have six incarnations in our society, one in our present reality with my own self. I see. Two within a future reality. Two at an earlier reality. And you have one at an origin creation point within our species. We have multiple incarnations here. Uh, okay, thank you. You are quite welcome. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Someone has to tell me if if you finish it asking your questions because I don't know. I did. Um, it's one simple question. Did he say yes? <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Okay, yes, thank you. All right. Um, there's a question from uh, Lily Plaid. Don, do you want to ask that question for her? From the chat. Some of these questions are coming from the YouTube chat, and so Don is reading them. Just okay. so you're aware. The Go question ahead. today uh, from Lily Pad is Do you have a pet in your spaceship? We have animals from our world that co inhabit the spaceship with us by choice, but we do not claim ownership over them. They typically come to actually assist us in our own relationships with one another because we use our animals as teacher spirits, but as incarnated teacher spirits. In other words, we experience their spiritual dimensions just as we experience the spiritual dimensions of one another. And they will actually choose in their generosity to share their experiences with us on ships, but we claim no ownership. They also have points of view where if they need to, they can begin to travel back to our home planet or to other star systems that they are also coming from. But yes, we do have what you call levels of animal consciousness and it's interesting extraterrestrial components that share the space with us. Thank you. So the concept of a pet is not actual? Correct. No, no, and it's because of the level of relationship we have with them. Okay. okay. We just simply see more of their autonomy being displayed from our point of view, than most of you typically do with the animals you encounter on your earth. You only tend to experience the more physicalized aspects of their being. And when you see the more underlying spiritual dimensions, you can connect with their soul in that way and understand what it is they're going through, what it is they want, and what it is they're experiencing. Okay, perfect. Christine has a question for you. Go ahead, Christine. Greetings and blessings. I Greetings was wondering, can you connect to my animals, to my companions? Yes. Could you tell me if I'm being a good <laughs> companion to them? Yes, one of them wants you to look a little bit higher. We're speaking poetically here. You have an eagle being that is connecting with you, and this being is asking for your point of view to be expanded, to be able to be in resonance with the realities it is showing you, because it is giving you alternate points of view that you can adopt if you so choose. And this is one aspect that we can reveal to you about your animal guidance. But yes, you are being complimented 
by them, especially the ones that are located more on the ground connection. You might say ones that are more physical earth-based. The eagle, though, however, is asking you to expand your point of view a little bit higher so you can see more of the bigger picture of your life and the reality teachings that it has for you. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Is there any other questions from within the chat? I don't see anybody. Okay. Um, so, so. Hi, Karen. Oh, go ahead, Lucia. Sure, go yes, ahead. Yes, thank you. All right. So I'm experiencing some health problems at the moment. Right. And there's so many different modalities of, of healing. And I'm kind of asking for a shortcut. What would be the best thing for my problem, if you can read my energy at the moment? Creating intense states of unconditional love within yourself that you can carry into whatever healing modality you resonate with. Okay. The more you can imagine and create the feeling and point of view of the state of being you prefer. Unconditional love, acceptance, appreciation, gratitude. Whenever you can go into this state and cultivate it in yourself, it will always accelerate whatever healing modality, whether it be diet, exercise, improved sleep, whatever it is, no matter what you choose, if you have that as your backbone, it will allow for the healing energies that are in resonance with these modalities to then more greatly impact your system. Thank you. That was very, very useful. Blessings. You're quite welcome. Blessings to you on your life. Thank you. Um, Autumn uh, Rose has the question. Uh, she says, is there a physical feeling such as feeling dizzy when a shift to another reality or timeline occurs? Yes. Many of you will feel dizzy. Many of you may feel choked up. You may have different physical symptoms such as crying that can occur. Oftentimes this represents a strong shifting of reality in such a way where different aspects of your being can very quickly bubble up and it can cause alterations in how you're feeling emotionally or energetically. Other times, too, you can experience it as heightened states of energy, heightened states of clarity, of course, depending on how you shift and the level of resistance within yourself to the shifting you have agreed to do. I, I, I can also just say, to, from my own experience, when I have very consciously shifted timelines, I've had incredible dizziness, so much so that I felt like I would throw up if I stood up. It was so very, very intense. So that, that's quite common. So if you've experienced it, and thank you for the confirmation. Uh, there's, a com there's a question from Richard uh, in the chat. He says, is my understanding that one young uh, Essasani, not Sasani, but Essasani woman created the telepathic connection between all of your people? Is this the step that we will go through? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is talking about one of our legends. Mm -hmm. We have an ancient name for this woman. Understand, she was one of the original dreamers of this reality. For when we were created, we were crafted in a manner that would allow for our telepathic link to be very easy to access. Mm -hmm. We also had alterations done to us from the beings you understand as the Baze, the Greys, as they are commonly called, that allowed for heightened states of empathy and heightened states of telepathy to be available to our kind, what you have come to know as the Sasani. We had this link stored within ourselves and we essentially were learning through our new interfacing with the new hybridized bodies that had been created. We were experimenting with how to open these techniques how to co-creatively use these techniques in a way that was based in our desires and passions and excitement. This legend is referring to one of the first members of our civilization, our society, our race, you could say, that was created, who allowed for herself to then generate that link, that knowingness, while in the physical, before other members of our society had been created. She was one of the first, you could say. When she did that, it wasn't that she linked her awareness to other members of our race in the physical. Because she was one of the first that was created, she began to become conscious of that link she had with all of the souls and consciousnesses that were going to then incarnate as her brothers and sisters. 
And that is what the story is talking about. She was one of the first members of our race that was created. And then once she engaged her unique biology with her awareness, she was able to bring the awareness of that telepathic link she had to all other beings that wanted to incarnate with her in these new hybridized bodies. She essentially helped that reality crystallize more for all the souls that wanted to become, which you understand us to be as Sasani. Uh, there's a question about uh, the name. If do you know the name of this woman or this female? She does have an ancient name. We will say it at this time. This is when word emanations were still being utilized by our creators in this sense. One moment. The name would be Aurora Ka. Aurora Ka. Okay, thank you for that. So, and, and, and thank you for reminding of the fact that you're, you're, society now doesn't really operate on names. You operate on energy signature. Is that correct? This is accurate. Yes. yes. As to all the other beings on our planet that we interface with. Right. So, so the name that you have given uh, to, to Tyler is purely for his recognition. Of exactly. The it is purely for convenience in this way. It does have relevance to my own energy in terms of how I understand the vibration but I'm providing it just as a physicalized permission slip tool to connect with me a little more easily. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I, I believe that's the same as Bashar because Bashar simply means, uh, doesn't it just mean like messenger or. Yes. Bringer of good news. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a question from Steve. Steve, go ahead. All right. Hello. Hello. Hi. Well, I appreciate your, uh, your your passion for teaching and and you, how how you how how active your uh, your 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 species is with uh, helping us understand that's you, have, you certainly have a talent for it. My question is in relation to one of your brother uh, hybrid races, the uh, Yell. Um, mm -hmm. Whether there's any faction within them that isn't too particularly fond of humanity, um, I yeah. yes, because <laughs> I, I I I have plans of working with them in the future and. Um, and, and I, I heard that perhaps there's some of them that don't care for that effort too much. There are members of the society that are less inspired and less excited to make the gap, to bridge the gap. We understand, though, that they are not, not excited out of negativity or not liking any of you. It's mainly that they have different passions, just as all of you have different passions, so you choose different options and the members of our society that are excited to connect with you are actively doing so. Understand that even though the Yahyel, as well as our society, do experience ourselves essentially as one being, we are all playing many different games, and oftentimes these games will link up as thieves. It just happens that there are members of that society, just as there are with our society, that are more invested in other aspects of the civilization and their own individual expressions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. Sorry, I always have the impression that uh, some of the people that are maybe not excited to work is because maybe the learning curve is too great and they don't want to take the time. Do you, do you get that impression? Is that? Yes, understand that there is a level of self mastery required to actually do this type of first contact work. It takes a specific level of training and understanding, and this is typically something that is done from a young age. Understand that in addition to first contact specialists, we also have members of our society that are working on various levels with all of your higher selves and dreaming selves to assist you in being able to balance your energies, understand more of our society's cultures and teachings, and to actually begin to bring that into your own civilization. So understand that we bring the best of the best when we come to interface with you through channeled means. And as a result, there are other people in our civilizations exploring other themes that don't line up with this type of work. Although it doesn't mean again that they are disinterested, it just means they're a little more interested in something else. Our societies do collectively tune into this dynamic because we are all telepathically linked in this way. So they are very aware of what is going on and they will tune in to receive teaching and information if it's something necessary for them. Right, right, okay, thank you. So it's not anything, uh, I guess, more 
maybe Steve's question had to be with maybe there was some sort of resistance or right something I'll have yeah. to work against in my efforts in cooperating with them. That's but that no, I, you clear that out, my friend. Thank you very much. You are quite welcome. Thank you. Um, there's a question from Lilypad that you, if you're willing to answer, I will ask the question. But uh, she wants to know. Can you provide her any information or tips to make sure she's not afraid of snakes? Well, remember, what you're afraid of is just teaching you. So maybe consider embracing the lesson, looking past the form of the teacher and just saying as a knowingness in yourself, I accept the lesson. I'm ready to hear the teaching. And you may find as you begin to accept the underlying energy and the underlying lesson the snake is emanating, your fear of the snake may actually start to dissipate and completely go away. You may also find if it doesn't, that the snake is showing you an aspect of yourself that you are creating from utilizing the energy of fear. So it will serve double duty. It will show you your own shadow and it will also deliver its unique teachings. Is there a difference between fear of a snake and a healthy uh, awareness that every snake is not your buddy and maybe you don't want to pick every one of them up? Absolutely. And that is why you have yeah. what you call the snake priestess of your world who will actually dance and touch and kiss snakes on your earth. Right. They understand, yes, the snake could destroy the physical body's ability to be able to continue to hold my consciousness here on earth if I co-created that. But I understand that I don't have to fear that because I'm connected to everything. So my existence continues no matter what. Right. Okay. Perfect. Is there any other questions? Lucia, do you have another question? Because I can't see you in the chat. And I want to Yes, I do. Okay, I know I, I'm on my phone and that's why I can't write anything down. No problem. So thank go you ahead. for letting me jump in. Okay. I have questions about Tyler because with all of his experiences and you coming in, is he becoming a medical intuitive? Yes, yes. He's already exploring this. And and are you helping him in, in a way? We are. We are helping him mainly to continue to teach himself because in order for him to be a medical intuitive, it's similar to how he connects with us. He has to suspend the idea of already knowing what's going to happen. Going into a state of allowing of information to unfold ensures that he's in the proper state to then perceive such information. So his relationship and being able to channel us is actually helping to support him in his pathway of medical intuition. Thank you. I'm asking because... I, I believe something is happening to myself. Um, it's not with every client, but it's, it's happened where a lot of information came through about supplements. And I was surprised. I, I, I know a little bit about health food and, and supplements myself. I was wondering if it was coming from myself or, or from some higher outside um, wisdom. It's always both. Without exception, always both. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Of course. Um, there's a question in the chat from uh, Christy Clark, and she says, um, she says, do I have, excuse me, okay, do I have a shared soul connection in the Sasani as I am connecting with a being called Shabin from Essasani? He says, mm -hmm. who's Chris, who, who, sorry, John, who's, who, who's, Who's he? Christy Clark is uh, uh, a man. He's a male. Yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry. So Christy Clark is a man. Excuse me. And his question was: Does he have? He's connecting with a uh, being called Shabin from the S Sasani, but he's wondering if he has a connection also into the uh, Sasani. We are laughing. <laughs> Good. Because we know this being. Okay. And he already knows the answer. Okay, perfect. So you know Shabin of the Essasani. Is that what you're saying? Yes, and we are essentially saying that his human component on your planet is still allowing for this knowingness to begin to come through. And we laugh because of the ongoing game. Perfect. Okay. So, haha, -ha, Christy. 
<laughs> That's what I'm saying. All right, perfect. All right, so um, I just want to make sure that if there's any, is there any other questions, Don, on your side or not? I have presented all the questions that I have had. Okay, it's perfect, because this is a good time. I just wanted to make sure they were clear. I had talked with Tyler uh, about uh, 5G, and it was something that he has been talking about, but I thought from your point of view, because this is a big topic here on the planet um, where I live in the Netherlands. Uh, they've started putting up 5G towers. Um, they have in Belgium, which is only, you know, right two hours away uh, from me, the Belgian border is an hour away. Um, they have ceased some of the 5G work until they can do some further studies on the health consequences. Can you tell us from your point of view what we should be aware of when it comes to 5G. What is your opinion on the health effects, good and or bad, and, and what should we really be doing with this? All right, well understand, it is again reflecting an aspect of your consciousness that's revealing to you that you are outgrowing some of your technology. When you invented the World Wide Web in this way, it was showing you the level of interconnectivity that you all have to one another. It was your technology just revealing that which you already know to be true about yourselves. It's just an externalized emanation of that knowingness. In many ways, you are learning about how connected you can be with one another using your technologies, but then also utilizing your internal psychic connections to one another. The implementation of 5G is essentially your corporation's attempt to accelerate the speed of this connection. And the idea is that it is, again, an externalized projection of something you already contain. You already contain the instantaneous downloading and knowing this needed to communicate with other members of your society telepathically and through synchronicity. And the idea is as you begin to go more into that inner world of connection to one another and to all things, the less you will see it reflected within your corporate infrastructure of technology. It's prompting you as a negative reflection because it's neutral, but it is negative because many people in your world project negativity onto it. It's just showing you, oh, look, we're making another technology to fortify our externalized projection of the knowingness. And instead of saying, oh yes, let's go there, let's build this, you're being presented an option to actually pull your energy away from that reality and then invest it more into the inner state of knowingness to then birth more technologies in, re in resonance with the inner knowingness. That's just one aspect of it. But we also see other aspects as well because it is multifaceted because there are many split off versions of Earth based on the implementation of the technology. It is very multidimensional in that sense. And you're giving this to yourselves so you can all accelerate even further in relationship to whatever desire direction you wish to go into. It's presenting many different access points to many different versions of Earth. That's why it's here. It's another step in your chapter of choosing your timeline. So in, 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 in reality, will there be a 6G, a 7G? All, I mean, is it going to continue? Or? There are versions of Earth where it does not continue, and there are versions of Earth where 5G does not actually become implemented. Okay. And the idea is right now it is playing a multidimensional role. It's essentially a hub. The theme of this is a hub for you to begin to use in whatever way you want so you can go to whatever version of reality you want. The idea is it's reflecting this through its presence in the collective consciousness of so many people in your society, as well as the emotional states it brings up. That is why it acts in this manner, because it's such a common theme for so many of you. Perfect. Okay. Um, Alex has a question. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you for your diplomacy, but um, <clears throat> the, the question uh, is simple. It's, it, it is detrimental or not, because... Um, <clears throat> We see on the 4G what is happening with the beans, uh, with the fish in the water. It's not only the the ascension process in the, our our solar system traveling in the universe. It's basically what uh, electro smoke 
is doing to the planet, right? You would understand that, yes, it does have different varying health effects on your systems. But again, this is depending, of course, upon what version of Earth you're on. Yes. I it's, have. Not, it's not set in stone in terms of what it does. There's infinite variations of what it does. That's why we're not giving you a definitive answer. Because we're leaving it to you to create whatever version you want. Do you want and to yes, create a version? Yes. Let's finish for a moment. Do you want to create a version of Earth? where you are experiencing its negative effects? If the answer is no, the idea is not to feed into that. But if you find you're experiencing fear of that possibility, that is the prop prompting you to transform the fear within yourself so you don't actually have to go to that version of Earth. So what it does will be very unique, depending, of course, upon what version of reality you shift to. We're not going to reinstate and reinforce the different fear-based perspectives of the health effects because we know most of you have heard of what it is purported to do but remember how that plays out is actually up to all of you so we are leaving that in your hands we are letting you know it is a neutral multi-dimensional prop so you can essentially begin to transform your consciousness in a way that allows for you to go to whatever unique version of earth you want to go and that's based on its nature of invoking so many different emotional states within you that are reflective of other themes you've gone on in your timeline in terms of interconnectivity as well as group themes of your species. Well, yes, much better. So um, we need to change the frequency. Of course. Right. Of course. Uh, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Our pleasure. Okay, perfect. All right, uh, Don, what were you saying about jump point? What is that? Well, I'm just saying that uh, the jump point would be uh, it, it, as being a hub. You can it, you can choose your own reality, much like he has just explained. You can you can be positive or negative, however you wish to make uh, your future. Okay. Sorry for that. I was sneezing as you were talking, so I do appreciate I got that. that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So in I, I have the impression, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, but that 5G is coming along because it's, as you said, it's an external uh, manifestation of what's going on inside of us. And really, because the the the, the point of 5G is to um, allow for the the massive amounts of information that is flowing to flow even quicker and even faster that it's really an external version of telepathy if if i'm not mistaken yes. Yes. do you do you can you tell me in a society when does that become internalized and is your telepathy is it is it mechanically assisted or is it something that has been developed so much that it is inborn in you? It is something that is both mechanical and natural to us. It is mechanically enforced through different satellite moons we have orbiting our planet because our telepathy is linked to our connection to our planet. If we were not connected psychically and energetically to the planet, our telepathy would not be as strong. So we utilize these satellites to harmonize the emanations of our planet with our own internal states so we can keep the telepathic link very strong and healthy when we are off planet it is something that is very natural to our quasi physicality we still have quasi physical organs in this way which you understand to be a brain heart major organs the idea is you would experience us in just a less dense manner if you were to experience us in that point of view where you're interacting with our quasi physicality the quasi-physicality is also reflective of the telepathic state because we evolved from physicality and our physicality was engineered to be able to support that. So it is something that is, again, physically supported through our own biology as well as our artificial intelligence technologies on our world. But understand, it is reflective of the unique types of consciousness that incarnates within our society. We are all knowing of one another before we incarnate into our Shikani civilization, Dasani civilization. 
And as a result, we already had that level of interconnectivity pre-incarnation. And the idea is that we are beings that are choosing to reveal to whoever observes us that this level of telepathy is possible. So we have chosen the Shakani bodies, the Sasani bodies, as you would call them, to help reflect to others that this is a natural phenomenon that you can begin to capitalize on utilizing your own biology systems or your own technologies. So, so basically, based on your own physicality, then, is the human body equipped? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because we come from the original humans in that way. We are alterations of the original human design. We're based off of you. Right. So, so right now, as we stand as a human race, we are, we are actually ready to make that kind of jump in our own physicality, or do we have to go through some additional tweaking? There's some, there's some additional tweaking, not so much in the way you think, though. The idea is you are already receiving telepathic messages. You just don't realize you're doing it. Okay. And as you begin to slip more into that knowingness, which is a state of being you're creating, you shift to a version of your body that has already created the knowingness and is utilizing it as a skill. And the idea is that as you become that version of yourself, you experience it as the passing of time. So you could say there's a little bit more time left, but really it's just an internal process of you becoming that version of yourself. And you're just experiencing that as time passing. Okay. You already contain it within you though. Okay. So is that the junk DNA? Is that? That is connected to it. Absolutely. You'll find it's actually highly valuable DNA. I didn't name it. I just, I just called oh, it. Oh, I know. We're <laughs> so the, so for 5G, how is that now going to facilitate AI or vice versa? One of the ways that you could see this being in support of the AI is, as we said, as your society begins to take away energy from this technology, there's so much momentum going into it, it will cause you to want to invest it into other things. Mm -hmm. And this will start to birth more of the excitement into the idea of creating artificially intelligent systems that are aware not so much of ideas corporations and humans in this way desire, but is actually more inclusive of all of the different intricacies of all forms of life on your world. And the idea is that these sort of technological feats eventually prompt you to want to open that door. So it is connected in a way, but not in the way many of you may expect. Okay, so what way is it connected then? If it's not- Through, really the, idea, through the idea of accomplishing different technological feats, it can prompt your society into wanting to do something else that is again, more sustainable, more healthy for your planet, because that's what many of your scientists and innovators are realizing is actually what is required. Right, for it to become conscious. Yes. Right. Is that, I, I, I wanna ask you if this is correct, but I know this from esotericism, and I know this from magic, and I also know this from the Hindu mystics that there's a sort of fail safe built in to the next level of consciousness that is love. And until you can align with that vibration, truly you don't go through the door, the next door. Exactly. It so, is exactly that. So even though you are, so even though your motives may be not so positive, eventually to, to ever be able to access it, you do have to go through that love transformation. Absolutely. 100% required because that is the key to all the doors of consciousness because that's the fabric of all consciousness. Right. So, so therefore we're not really, and, and I know, I know the alternate worlds and all the, you know, I know what you mean about all the dimensions and shifting to the earth. But I mean, if you look at it from the big picture, we're really not ever in total danger of, getting too much power because we have to go to love to get it. Absolutely. Yes. And and you, love, go ahead. And you may understand that you may be able to use your power in a way that's not in resonance with love, but then you will not be creating what you call that next level of consciousness. You will be essentially stagnating within a particular level of reality and then creating different versions of it from there. And that can have positive and negative applications depending on how it's done. 
But the idea is that when love is the underlying vibration a being is utilizing, they will always climb the ladder because the love is actually guiding you. It is bringing you to a specific point of view and series of points of view. Right. So even if you think you can avoid it, you really can't. And so you'll get there in the end anyway, to the love. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Thank you for that. You are welcome. We have, we have actually come to the top of our hour. Um, I'll just ask one more time through the, through the chat. If there's anyone that has a question, um, please in Lucia, if, if you do, you need to jump in. So I, cause I can't see if you're writing something, but if there's any, anybody that has a question, please let us know. Um, and we can ask it before we go. Here she comes. I see her. Yes. Hi, Karen. Thank you so much. All right. So my question has to do with, again, this healing um, that I have to go through at the moment, but I'm sure that others might, um, might find my question useful. Now, how can we ask you for assistance? All right. Well, please keep in mind that we are in resonance with an aspect of your consciousness you could identify as your own higher self. Yes. In order to work with us, you must surrender to your own higher self. You must say to it, hey, out of my own choice, to be more of myself, I'm going to use my own higher self points of view. Once that lens, which is unique to all of you, is adorned, it then allows for you to be able to interface with our society much more directly because you will be in a similar enough vibration where you can tap into our telepathic network. Because that's the level of consciousness we are emanating, which you call your own higher selves. Yes. This would probably be the most direct way to begin to interact with us. There are also different symbols you can utilize to connect with our society, such as blue triangles. This is one way you can connect with us. Understand, too, through listening to members of our society, speaking through channels of your earth, you will also begin to shift into our awareness just through hearing our energy emanating in that particular way. The best way, though, the most crucial way, though, is the formula that our society constantly gives all of you, which is to follow your excitement, your passion at every given moment to the best of your ability that you're able to with zero expectation of any particular outcome and to continue to choose these options. That is the fastest way to connect to our society. When you are using these tools to then be in resonance with us, you can then begin to ask us for different perspectives telepathically in your dreams while you are awake through automatic writing, whatever it is for you. You can then begin to ask us for different points of view that you can use to be able to assist yourself in your own healing process. The most crucial thing is beginning to match our vibration first. And that will ensure that you are better able to receive whatever it is we may set. Thank you. That's very grateful. Thank As you. are we to all of you. Thank you. Um, I believe that's the last question, unless someone has something very quickly. But we always close uh, with a blessing, and we would like to know if you would give us a blessing before we go. All right, we would be happy to give you a blessing. Thank you. Oh, it's so cold. Oh, what? What's so cold? Yeah, cold. Oh, what? 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 Oh, our unconditional love to all of you, all members of your society. And we look forward to more interaction with all of you in the future. Thank you very and much. You are much love to you and you're please, we, you're always welcome. <clears throat> so, mm -hmm. welcome back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, that was very wonderful. Um, there is one question, uh, if, if you can take it, that we didn't get, but uh, it came in sort of last minute. It's from Lana. Do you see it at the very bottom? She says, uh, what other power sources other than electricity did did you discover? I guess maybe on your own planet. Is there any kind of power sources? Yeah. Um, so I'd have to tune in. But yeah, they've definitely discovered alternative sources of power. Um, I imagine it's a variation of subtle energy that 
Let's see, I'm just tuning in. Yeah. Come back. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Sorry about so that. So getting that it is it is a form of it is a form of energy that is linked to electromagnetic energy, but it's essentially a bigger expression of that. And that electromagnetic energy is just one expression of this underlying energy. And that's a bigger, so it's sort of like one extension of, uh, you know, a, a source of power. Okay. Um, so there's ways to be able to tap into it that are different than just the electromagnetic expression. And that's what it sounds like they're doing. Okay. But yeah, it is, it is a source of power. I imagine it's life force. I imagine it is, it is just universal life force right. being what they're, they're tapping into. Okay. Thank you so very much. Um, Okay, and we're going to stop with the questions because we are at the top of the hour. So thank you so very much, everybody. And but since there are so many questions, then we definitely would like to have you back if we can, and, and invite you back, and and just and you know to explore more with you. So, but it's so I so appreciate it on my side that you were able to jump in at the very last moment and that you were open to to that uh, co-creation and and you know that you woke up early enough that you would get my message. So. And that's so very much appreciated. And, and uh, yeah, I just wish you all the success with your study, your acupuncture, and as you continue to, to unpack and discover and expand on your journey, it's just very nice to watch. And it'll be interesting to see where you are, say, even in a few months' time as you begin to tap in more and more and more and expand yourself. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for the the support um, and and for having me on. I mean, this was a this was a really unexpected and really fun way to to spend Saturday. I've been enjoying doing the sessions and um, you know another opportunity to be able to do them and to to practice the skill and to grow the skill is always always welcome. So I'd, I'd love to be another guest again. Perfect. Um, I I didn't have very much information because our our uh, our uh, interaction was very brief, but I did find your. And I did put it in the in the description. Your email address, where people can get in touch with you for sessions. You do do sessions, is that correct? I do. Yeah, yeah. So I do um, private or group uh, channelings uh, done in person or over Skype if the person's far away. I also do um, uh, different Taoist energy healings uh, in person or uh, distance, and that can also be done privately or with groups. Um, as well as nutritional consultations and different meditations to open up uh, our innate psychic skills. Uh, again, done privately or in groups. Okay, perfect. And you're on Facebook, so people can find you, friend you, send you messages. Yeah, like I'm on uh, I'm on Facebook and uh, YouTube. Also okay. YouTube. And do you have do you have a website? Because I didn't uh, find not not yet. Um, okay. I'm still working on building one. Okay, perfect. So for now, uh, go through the email address. Also, you're in the Hukalo group, I believe. If you're not, we'll add you, but people can probably reach out to you there as well. So, awesome. so thank you so very much uh, for yeah, your time and course. love to you. Namaste. And thank you to everyone that was watching today. Um, this has it's been really nice. I didn't realize that you were so uh, new really on your journey and that this was just happening for you right now. So that just feels so serendipitous that like, you're like, Oh, I've been doing this now really intensely for a month. Which yeah. is really awesome. So well, I'm happy to, uh, we're happy to get you so early in, in the process and yeah. to, to share this with you. Um, also for people for next week, uh, we have a really special uh guest from the Keepers of the Code group on Facebook, which is a light language driven uh, group. We have Ava Nunes, who is just, a, excuse me, not Ava, Anna Nunes. She is just a beautiful uh, expression of light language. She's from Portugal and she just has a, just a very beautiful, deep inner knowing. She really works with energy systems and uh, healing and directed energy. And so it, it should be a really a big delight. It's going to be different webinar than we've done with channeling. It's going to be very, very much focused on light language, but she channels what she needs to send to the different people. She can see your blocks. She can see all the different uh, things that need to be worked on. So I encourage you to tune in for that. And then hopefully the week after that, um, we'll have Jim back. So much love to everyone, and we will see you next time. Much love. Thank you. It was great. Oh, thank you, guys. A lot of fun. Thanks, everybody, for coming. It was a pleasure to work with all of you.